In the NFL, when it comes to awards, none stands higher out than that of the MVP. But when it comes to Detroit Lions superstar quarterback Jared Goff, he is almost never included in this conversation. Why is that the case? We're going to talk about it, so stay tuned. What are we? What makes us what we are and what we're going to be? It's grit. It's what we started with last year, guys. It doesn't matter if you have one ass cheek and three toes. I will beat your ass. Can definitely compete with, with, with the big dogs. 10, 5, end zone, touchdown Detroit Lions. You guys, you guys are unbelievable, man. I, I'm telling you. We are driven by Detroit. Hello, all my Detroit Lions fans and family members. How are y'all doing? Hopefully well. Welcome on back to yet another episode of MCM Motor City Mania. I'm your host, David T. Pike. And as always, we're diving on in. My friends, we have already come to that point in the year when people are going to start talking about the MVP award. They're going to start talking about people who should be able to be in the running for the award. And it starts early, and it gets ridiculously competitive from literally right out the gate. Because that is how much that award means to players. When you get the MVP award, you are being voted as the best player in the NFL over the course of that, you know, singular season. It's a very prestigious award. That's not to say other awards aren't prestigious, but that one is what you would call the, the, the granddaddy of it. That's the one you absolutely want to have because that's the one that's going to stand out the most compared to all other awards. But here's the thing, folks. When it comes to awards, especially the MVP award, it's now become to a point where not the best player per se gets the award, but the most popular player who's pretty damn good gets the award. Notice how I made that clear distinction. Instead of it being about who's the best player that's playing, it's about who is the most popular player that also has a good amount of talent. Again, most of the awards in the NFL now are based off of popularity contests. They're not based off of who is the most, you know, um, actually deserving of said award. And the reason why this is a problem is because there have been times where certain players may not have had the best season, but because of stuff they've done in the past, name recognition, whatever, they've won said awards. I personally think that that's a crying shame because it's like, no, it should go to the best player. And let's think about this, folks. The reason why that that is a problem is because we have to take a look at the nature of the MVP award as it is right now. It's primarily a quarterback award now. It used to be a running back award because running backs used to be what predominantly made up offenses, but now it's quarterbacks. And the reason I know this is because y'all want to know the last time a non-quarterback player won the MVP award? You'd have to go all the way back to 2012 when Adrian Peterson, the running back, won it. And then, if you want to try and find a time when two straight years in a row quarterbacks didn't win it, you'd have to go back to 2005 and 2006 when running back Sean Alexander and then running back LaDainian Tomlinson won it. That's how far back you'd have to go to realistically find non-quarterbacks winning this award. That's ridiculous, folks. So... We already know this. It's a popularity award primarily. It's primarily also given to quarterbacks now. Now we understand where the conversation topic is about said award. And when we take a look at it from this year, nothing's changed. Everybody that's talking about the MVP conversation already five games into the year is talking about all quarterbacks. But here's where the problem is, at least for this year's conversation. Most of the quarterbacks that people would try to, you know, include in that conversation have one of two problems. Either they themselves are not playing very well, or they might be playing well, but their teams are not. Because again, it's a popularity contest. Well, voters are not going to give the most prestigious award in the NFL to a guy that's playing really well, but he's on a crap team. And likewise, it shouldn't go to somebody who's playing crap overall, but just because they're popular, hey, we're going to include them. But that's where we find ourselves when we start this conversation. And that's why, for me, it is an appalling nature about the fact that Jared Goff is not included in this conversation. And I'm going to tell you why. Because in my honest opinion, Jared Goff has done more than enough over the last couple of years 
to be included in conversations like this. But yet, Jared Goff is almost never included in these conversations. In fact, most, most times, if you even try to put MVP next to Jared Goff's name, you're going to get laughed out of a room. And my sincere question is, why the hell not include him in the MVP conversation? And that's where we're going to have this conversation. Because think about this, folks. When you start talking about the MVP candidates that typically are being talked about in the NFL, you're talking about guys like Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow, uh, if you're a Cowboys fan, certainly you're going to try and talk about Dak Prescott, Josh Allen, etc. These are the guys that you're talking about. But as I'm about to show up on the screen right here, take a look at how these guys have been performing. Other than Joe Burrow and Josh Allen, at least statistically, there's not really a whole lot to look at that's actually very impressive. So I decided to ask myself, okay, based off of these stats, why would we include these guys? What's, why are people even trying to include them if based upon the parameters I just talked about, they're not even meeting it? Because let's take a look at Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow has the best stats out of the four guys that's up on the screen there. He's got a literal 6-1 to one touchdown interception ratio. He's got the highest pass rating out of the whole bunch. But oh, that's right. While Joe, Joe Burrow is playing at an extremely high level, his team is literally dis, just literally disintegrating. It's imploding around him. The Bengals are one in four. And I'm going to just simply say it. Even if Cincy fans don't want to admit it, if he, even though they don't want to acknowledge it, at one and four, your season's pretty much over. It is almost damn near impossible to make the playoffs after starting the first five games of the year with one damn win. And if that weren't bad enough, I would not be at all too surprised if the way things go, are going and they continue to go, this is the last year that Zach, tenure, or Zach Taylor's tenure will be as the head coach of Cincy. That's just the way I see it. So that's Joe Burrow. Great guy, playing absolutely phenomenal. But his team is absolutely just, you know, destruct, just in a self-destruct mode. Then you take a look at Josh Allen. Now Josh Allen has got an 8-0, you know, 8-0 touchdown interception ratio. He hasn't even thrown an interception yet this year. And he's also got a pretty damn good passer rating. So why am I having an issue with him as far as the MVP conversation? Okay, take a look at how well that guy has played over the last two games. I'm going to put the stats up on the board. Because the last two games he's played against were against the Houston Texans and the Baltimore Ravens. In those two games, for MVP candidate Josh Allen, he has completed 42.4% of his passes for just a tick over 300 yards, 5.3 in average to throw, one touchdown and no interceptions, with a 65 even passer rating. That's over the last two games, folks. So almost half of his season, he has played like straight ass. I'm sorry, but MVPs do not play that bad. They sure as hell don't play that bad over a two-game span. Oh, sure, you might have a bad game every once in a while, but to have it for two straight weeks? No, that's not MVP caliber level of play. And if it is, then you definitely need to start changing your parameters. That's what I'm trying to get at here. You can't say it's good. You can't say it's good for one player and then say it's not good for another. Otherwise, then you start getting into this whole thing of being a hypocrite. But moving on. Now let's talk about, you know, Patrick Mahomes, the best quarterback in all of football. Mahomes has literally built himself a reputation of being the next GOAT. But let's think about this, folks. Is that good enough? to include him in the MVP conversation this year. For most people, they would automatically not even think about it. They would say, yes, he's been the best quarterback over the last, you know, however many years, at least since Tom Brady was on his way out. But let's think about it. The Chiefs are 4-0, so you can't say anything bad about their ability to win games. They're one of the few teams left in the NFL that have a perfect record. But Mahomes' personal stats, they suck. He's literally got six touchdowns to five interceptions, and he has a sub-90 passer rating, folks. So let me ask you this question. Do you think the reason the Chiefs are 4-0 is because of Patrick Mahomes? I'm just going to put it very bluntly. No way in hell. If I realistically want to look at why they're 4-0, it's because of the fact that Andy Reid is a damn good head coach and he has great leadership and because Steve Spagnola has probably got the best defensive concept and scheme in the entirety of all NFL. Because if you think about this, in the four games that Patrick Mahomes has played, obviously prior to tonight's game on Monday night, he has only one game this season where he has thrown more touchdown passes than interceptions. Every other single game that he's played, save one, he has thrown the same amount of interceptions to touchdowns. That right there also should tell you something else. 
In every single game he's played this year, he has not had a game where he has not thrown an interception. Yikes. For the best quarterback in all of football, that's problematic. And I get it. The Chiefs have had a lot of injuries. They don't have the same amount of offensive talent that they've had in the past. But my point of the matter is, is that if you take a look at who he's been playing against, the Falcons, the Bengals, the Ravens, the Chargers, three of those teams have had passer ratings against other quarterbacks that have been either just above 100 or just below 100. And that's the Falcons, Bengals, and Ravens. The only passing defense that the Chiefs and, you know, Patrick Mahomes has faced that have not been good, or sorry, that has been great, pardon me, I had that backwards, is the Chargers. So, again, if Patrick Mahomes is all that good, which I'm not saying that he isn't good, I know he's one of the best. Then why is he playing so poorly? This is where I start turning my conversation towards golf, folks. Remember how I used to say when people wanted to tell me that golf just had to play better with what he had? And I tried to argue that, hey, he has to have a good supporting cast. And people wanted to tell me I was full of it. This instance right here just goes to prove that even Mahomes is human. Even Mahomes needs a good supporting cast. Otherwise, oh my God, he starts looking average. Six touchdowns to five interceptions, folks, is not good. So, having talked all about this, my question goes back to what I said just a couple of minutes ago and how I started this whole episode. Why in the hell, then, is Goff not being considered for the MVP conversation? Because let's think about this, folks. Has Goff's overall numbers this year been the greatest? No, they haven't. But let's think about this. If you're going to include guys like Patrick Mahomes, who have not been playing very good this year, and you're going to include them just because of their, you know, prior season success, then you absolutely have to include Jared Goff. If you're going to start talking about certain guys that have played well this year or just played well over a game or two, then you absolutely have to include Jared Goff. Here's the reason why. Let's think about this, folks. Let's think about it from just this singular season perspective and just the last, you know, couple of games. Jared Goff, by far, has played the best game of any quarterback this year and probably of all time, at least from a efficiency and statistical perspective. You cannot find in any other point in NFL history where a quarterback has completed 18 of 18 throws for almost 300 yards, two touchdowns to no interceptions with a damn near perfect passer rating. There's only one quarterback that's done that in all of NFL history. That's Jared Goff. Patrick Mahomes can't say he's done that. Neither Tom Brady, neither Peyton Manning, not Drew Brees, not Joe Montana. So yeah, that right there already, if nothing else, should include Jared Goff into that conversation for this year. But then think about how Jared Goff has played over the last two games in stark contrast to Josh Allen. The last two games, Jared Goff has completed 87.8% of his passes for almost 500 yards, four touchdowns to one interception for, again, a 138.9 passer rating. That blows Josh Allen out of the damn water, folks. It's not even close. Now, I know somebody's going to say, well, David, that's expected because, you know, Jared Goff has all these weapons and Josh Allen doesn't have any. But that's my point. If Josh Allen is so great, he should be able to make anything work with, you know, whatever he's got. Goes back to the whole supporting cast conversation that I've had for the last couple of years with Jared Goff, just like I was just saying with Patrick Mahomes. It also applies to guys like Josh Allen. They have to have a decent ensemble in order to play well or in order to play well from game to game rather than just, hey, They've had some really good performances earlier on in the season, but then when they have two really bad performances, it doesn't really look all that bad from the, from the grand picture. But if you get more closer and deeper into the weeds, you start getting a much more um, heinous picture, so to speak. So there's that concept that I'm talking about with this whole MVP conversation with Jared Goff. But then, like I was also talking about, there are some people that would just simply, like I say, include guys like Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow, even though Joe Burrow's playing a really great year this year, just because of what they've done over the past couple of years. So I said to myself, I was like, you know what? Let's take a look at some of the best quarterbacks that have been talked about from the MVP perspective over the last couple of years. And for that, I talked about four quarterbacks. I talked about Lamar Jackson because the guy's won freaking two MVP awards ever since he got into the NFL. Obviously, Patrick Mahomes obviously Josh Allen, and obviously Joe Burrow. Take a look at all four of those guys' stats as I put them up on the screen. You're going to notice something. I literally 
went down and took a look at what their guys' stats were from 2022. Only one guy out of all four of those guys, in comparison to each other, has got stats in every single category of completion percentage, yards, touchdowns, and passer rating that is literally top 10 in every category. That's Patrick Mahomes. So, okay, Patrick Mahomes has clearly been validated as to why he should be considered in the MVP conversation every year. The guy has literally played like a top 10 quarterback for the last, you know, literal two and a half going on three years. Okay, folks, now we're going to have this fun conversation. Let's take a look at what Jared Goff has been doing since 2022. Oh, that's right. Jared Goff, every single statistical parameter, passing yards, passing completion percentage, passing touchdowns, and passer rating, Jared Goff is in the top 10. He's ranked ninth in pass completion percentage, second in passing yards, fourth in passing touchdowns, and seventh in passer rating. So out of all the quarterbacks that most people would literally talk about for the MVP caliber conversation over the last couple of years, Jared Goff is literally right there, toe-to-toe, with Patrick Mahomes. In fact, he's the only guy, statistically-wise, that is toe-to-toe with Patrick Mahomes. That ought to really set off some alarm bells, folks. Because, oh, that's right. Let's think about this as well. Name me the quarterback in all of the NFL right now that has won multiple games against Patrick Mahomes and has not had a single loss against him. There's only one. Oh, that's right. It's Jared Goff. Ain't that a damn coincidence? And let's think about this, folks. Why else should Jared Goff be in this conversation? I'll tell you why. Let's take a look at Goff's personal history over, you know, the last couple of years. Number one, Jared Goff has quite literally resurrected himself from the literal bowels of hell. When Jared Goff got traded here in 2021, nobody, and I mean nobody outside of the Detroit Lions organization and a couple of fans that saw what Jared Goff was, thought of Jared Goff anything more than just what the media was portraying him. A bridge quarterback, a bum, a bust. He was just going to be here in Detroit for literally one, maybe two years, and then he was going to be gone. That is literally what the entirety of the NFL damn near tried to portray Jared Goff as. So Jared Goff had to resurrect himself here in Detroit, of all places. The place where most people over the last 20 years have gone to die in their careers. Oh, speaking of Detroit, Jared Goff helped, dis- Jared Goff helped resurrect the Detroit Lions. Think about that, folks. Helped resurrect the Detroit Lions, a franchise that for us fans who know so well about it, has been such a putrid organization over the last two decades. He, along with Brad Holmes, Dan Campbell, Amon Ross St. Brown, Panay Sue, and all the rest of them, helped resurrect the Lions. But Jared Goff was definitely a huge part of that. Because without Goff, we don't have the picks. Without Goff, we don't have the quarterback. Without Goff, we don't win a lot of games. So yeah, Jared Goff helped in that as well. Oh, And then think about this. Out of all the quarterbacks that I literally just talked there, Lamar, Mahomes, Allen, Burrow, Jared Goff had the worst roster as far as talent being, uh, you know, uh, what's the word I'm trying to say here, collectively put together, ensembled in 2002. He had the worst roster at the start of 2002 as far as talent was concerned out of all those other four guys. It's not even a debate. But yet Jared Goff is the only other quarterback out of those four that literally can say statistically he can go toe-to-toe with Patrick Mahomes. That's a damn interesting fact now, don't you think? Oh, and then think about this. When you take a look at all those quarterbacks also, Jared Goff is also the only quarterback that has developed multiple players, multiple rookies, while also playing at a statistical level similar to Patrick Mahomes. Because think about it. Jared Goff has developed Amon Ross St. Brown, He's developed Jamison Williams, he's developed Sam Laporta, and he's developed Jameer Gibbs. You think about it, that right there is primarily our offense. That is our offense in a nutshell. We don't have that offense unless Jared Goff is developing those guys. Correct me if I'm wrong, folks. That's my point. Jared Goff has literally just been like, check, 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 check. I've, you know, checked all these damn boxes. I literally can stand right next to Patrick Mahomes and say, hey man, what's up? I got the same numbers you do. Ain't that funny? 
The only thing that Jared Goff doesn't have is being included in the damn conversation. But why? Why is he not included? I'll tell you why he's not included. And it's the most absolutely pathetic thing in the whole world. The reason why Jared Goff is not included, pardon me, I tried to combine his two names into one, is because of the past narrative. Courtesy of damn Sean McVay. Thank you so much. If you think about it, Sean McVay has done more damage to freaking Jared Goff's career and image than anybody in the NFL. It's not even close. Then, the second reason why Jared Goff is not included is because Jared Goff is not a flashy mobile quarterback. The last non-mobile quarterback that won the NFL MVP award was Tom Brady in 2017. Every other quarterback that has won it at some degree or some level can say that they had mobility or if they didn't have the most mobility in the world, they were considered flashy because of what they could do on the field as a passer. So again, Jared Goff is not going to get into that conversation with, compared to other guys like Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, so on and so forth. And then the last reason is because of Jared Goff being here in Detroit. Think about it, folks. Detroit is a big sports town, but comparatively to other markets, it's a rather small one. Compared to places like New York, Chicago, LA, and and elsewhere, the market size is just not big enough. Yeah, it's a big sports town, but the market is nowhere near as big as far as being able to generate revenue and generate, you know, people talking about it compared to those other places. Then you talk about the market recognition. Again, when you talk about football, most people don't instantaneously go straight to Detroit. They should, considering how damn well we've been playing over the last couple of years. But again, most people go to places like Chicago, Dallas, Kansas City, the places where, hey, there's a huge market. And then finally, there's the brand itself. Now, granted, this has gotten a lot better over the years, but the Detroit Lions for so long have been an absolute joke of a brand compared to teams like the Cowboys, the Chiefs, and others that have literally established themselves over the years and literally they have fans everywhere in mass quantities and they have a huge revenue base. That's why I'm saying it's gotten better in the last couple of years because as we've clearly seen, our fans can take over damn near any one stadium. But again, in comparison to what everybody else has as far as MVP power, we simply don't have it. And then we have to talk about the Lions' actual history here. There's only been one other there's been only one other Detroit Lion that's won the MVP award. That's Barry Sanders. I'm going to tell you this right now. It's not been proven, but I'm suspecting that many would have an issue with Golf being an MVP player when the only other Lions that's uh, only other Lions player that's won that is Barry. To say that the two Lions that have won the MVP award are Barry Sanders and Jared Goff, I know some people would instantaneously have a problem with that, even though they shouldn't. But my whole point is when I brought those reasons up is that none of those reasons are either fair for evaluation as to why Jared Goff shouldn't be given the award and they should not be used as a reason to eliminate a player like Jared Goff. Again, think about this, folks. The last time that a player from a non, you know, big kind of market area or team The last time that happened was in 2015 and 16 when the Carolina Panthers quarterback Cam Newton won it and then the very next year Atlanta Falcons quarterback Matt Ryan won it. Neither Carolina or Atlanta are big, you know, football areas. But those were the last time that someone won those awards. My whole point is this. Based upon every single thing I have said here, past historical success, Jared Goff's comparison to the other quarterbacks, blah, 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 blah. Jared Goff has earned a right to be at the table. Jared Goff has earned a right to be at that conversation. And the fact that he isn't is a damn travesty. But anyway, I'm going to end this episode. And I just want to say to everyone, thank you all for watching yet another episode of MCM Motor City Mania. If you like what you saw, by all means, I highly encourage you all to watch the next episode. Also want to encourage you all, please, to do one of these three things. Like, comment, and subscribe. If by chance you subscribed in the past and you forgot to do so at the time, or you just subscribed and you not had a chance to do so, again, want to highly encourage you all to do that. But I also want to encourage you all, make sure you hit that bell notification icon so you guys never miss any more content. Also want to encourage you all to share the content with your Lions, friends, and family members. Share it here on YouTube. Share it on Twitter. Share it on Facebook. Share it anywhere and everywhere you possibly can. Because the more we can do it, the greater the channel can grow, the greater the channel can spread, and the better we're able to bring in new content viewership. And with that being said, whether you've been a long-time viewer or this is your first time viewing me, I hope you all enjoyed the content. I hope you all are having a great day and you've got something in your life that makes you happy, makes you smile. 
God bless, my friends. And until the next time we meet, I'll see you all in the next episode. Thank you.